Now that it's 2021 and the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs are out, I thought now would be a good time to take a look back at the first generation of Ryzen CPUs and see how they hold up today. The concept that I'm going for here is that a lot of you guys are planning on upgrading your graphics cards to the 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080 kind of level cards, either from Nvidia or now AMD, which is kind of cool to say, and so you're considering whether you need to upgrade your CPU as well. So hopefully this video will sort out those questions you have, both for gaming and for productivity, so let's jump into it. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Let's start off with explaining which CPUs I'm using. First of all, I have a 3600X as my relatively modern comparison. I would have used a 5600X here to show effectively the, the biggest margin I could, but unfortunately I don't have one and they're not in stock so I can't even buy one to use for this video. With that said, the 3600X is still a very good option and it's still a good option in terms of pricing and performance even with the 5th generation chips out, so that kind of makes sense. For the first gen chips, I have basically the four that are still working and available to me to test with, which is the 1800X, the 1700X, the 1600X, and the 1600 non-X. I feel like that's a fairly representative sample of the high-end and then the mid-range of both the 8s and the 6-core chips, so let's take a look. Now, like I said, I was planning on using a sort of 3070, 3080 level card for this testing, but unfortunately, because I don't have 3070 or 3080, I'm using a 2080 Ti instead, as that's around about 3060 Ti, 3070 levels of performance, and so should be a reasonable comparator there. I'm also testing at both 1080p and 1440p for the game results, as a lot of people who are buying these higher tier graphics cards are upgrading to 1440p monitors, which I can confirm because I play at 1440p, is really, really nice. With that said, let's start by taking a look at the 1080p numbers. Starting off with Watch Dogs Legion, this is a game that is incredibly difficult to run, even at 1080p, even with the 2080 Ti, hence the highest FPS number we have here is 85. With that said, the 3600X does have a convincing lead over the first gen pair, or sets, although it's actually, the 1800X is closer than I thought it would be. Basically, the performance drops off, as you kind of expect, based on however much money you spent back in 2017, or I guess whenever you bought one, with the 1600X giving a reasonable margin at 60 FPS, but not too much more. When it comes to COD Modern Warfare, this is even more of a linear step down from the, the newest 3600X to a bit lower to the 1800, and then again a fairly even step with obviously the 1600X and 1600 being fairly close since they're essentially the same chip but with the 1600 being ever so slightly slower. With that said, it's still a pretty playable experience, of course, at ultra settings, you're getting 131 FPS even on the, the slowest chip, so that's certainly fine, but there is quite a big performance delta between the slowest and, well, the new ones. When it comes to Fortnite, the story is the same. It's actually a slightly bigger gap from the newer 3600X to the 1800, or if you want to go like for like, it's a pretty massive gap between the 3600X and the 1600X. You are, again, still getting very playable performance at over 120, 130 across the board and up to 165 with 1800X, but of course that is at 1080p. When it comes to Cyberpunk, this is also an incredibly difficult game to run, and there is some level of, I guess, margin of error with this, as there's no built-in benchmark, and uh, it can be quite variable in just playing it and the, the performance you get, even in the same region, which I tried to, to keep it as best as I can, but with that said, you're, get, you're still getting 50 to 60 FPS across the board on the older chips, but you are getting 84 with the new one. So, somewhat unsurprisingly, the performance you get is based on basically how much money you spent a couple of years ago. The 1800X performs the best out of the bunch, with the 1600X still doing a reasonable job, and that's the one that a lot of people still have. If you were to upgrade though, you get a significant performance improvement. Anywhere between like five or I think it's 8%, although up to over 30% going from the just the 1800X to the 3600X. If you wanted to go part for part, going from 1600X to 3600X, well, you're looking at anywhere between 20 and 40% more performance 
at 1080p, which is kind of insane. Now that's how they perform at 1080p, what about at 1440? So again, starting off with Watch Dogs Legion, this is a lot more of a, an interesting, um, I guess, graph, because you can see that the 1800X technically beats the 3600X here. It's only by two FPS, but across the board, these are a lot closer numbers than we saw with the 1080p numbers, and that's mostly because at 1080p, these older chips are a lot more of a bottleneck than the, the new one is relatively, and at 1440p, that bottleneck is a lot more lifted, if you like. When it comes to COD Modern Warfare, basically all of these results are close enough to being within margin of error. Of course, the 1600 non-X is still uh, just ever so slightly the slowest here, but it's not by much, and it's, again, a very, very playable experience. You're still getting 120, 130 FPS at 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing turned off, but still it's a very playable and enjoyable experience using any of these chips. The same goes for Fortnite. This is a bit more of a linear curve, a bit more of the, the sort of performance you would expect with the newest chip, the 3600X, basically matching the 1800. And then there's a, a small drop to the 1700X, which is basically just a slightly slower version of the 1800X. And then the 1600 and 1600X are kind of close with, again, a slight drop off for the slower chip. Again, pretty much as you'd expect. As for Cyberpunk, this is again a, a very similar story where you're seeing uh, a fairly linear drop-off. So the, the newest chip, the 3600X, is definitely the, the fastest here, only by a couple FPS margin, but still it's worth something. And the 1% lows are actually a good bit better with that chip than they are on the older ones. And then there's again a fairly linear step down from all the way from the 1800 down to the 1600X. It seems like Cyberp Cyberpunk really likes single threaded performance right now, as you can kind of see. So it's a, an interesting look, if nothing else. At 1440p, the difference is a lot less noticeable. Yes, you will get more performance using a third generation chip, over one of these first gen ones, but the margin isn't quite as large. Even when you want to go from 1600 to 3600, there is still a reasonable difference, but it's not the sort of difference between making a game like Cyberpunk playable and not, at least at ultra settings, like there was at 1080p. One interesting thing to note though, is that a lot of the benchmark results I collected at 1440p with the old uh, first generation chips were actually almost identical to the performance numbers at 1080p, which goes to show how much of a bottleneck those chips are at 1080p in those games, you know, at those sorts of settings. You get a massive uplift at 1080p, whereas not so much at 1440. So that's gaming, what about the more productivity side? Let's start off with Cinebench and the single threaded tests. Both in R20 and in R23, there was a pretty sizable margin between basically any of the first gen chips and the 3600X. The uh, single core performance you get from that is insane, and bear in mind that now the 5600X is out, that best the 3600X by a pretty decent margin as well, so yeah, massive gap. The one interesting thing is that the 1600X is actually kind of the standout there, as well the 1800X does beat it in most tests, it still holds its own pretty well. When it comes to the multi-threader though, it kind of plays out as you'd expect, except the newer 3600X, thanks to its faster individual cores, was able to basically match the 1800X in all core performance. Considering that the 1800X is an 8 core and the 3600X is only a 6 core, that's really kind of surprising to see. In the more real world workloads like rendering in Blender or doing a render in Premiere Adobe Media Encoder, there was kind of a similar performance to the, the single threader results. Uh, with Blender and the BMW render, the 1800X just about wins, although the 3600X is close and actually ties with the 1700X as well. And overall, you kind of get the, the performance you would expect from the first gen chips. The 1800X is the fastest and it tears down, but not by all that much difference. Whereas in the uh, Gooseberry render, which takes a lot longer, the 3600X wins by a full minute here. And then after you know jumping to the 1800X, it's a couple of minutes in between each chip, which is kind of to be expected. 
As for Premiere, because Premiere is a lot more single thread heavy, uh, but can be balanced out by cores, all of the chips, the 3600 x does still win here, but all of the first gen chips are actually pretty, pretty close, generally speaking, which was kind of surprising to see. Oh, and if you're wondering about power consumption, well, they're not all that different. The 3600X does win the performance per watt category here, although technically speaking, the 1600 non-X did draw less power at 75 watts instead of 85, although the performance you got for that 75 watts is a fair bit less. The 1600X drew 100 watts, the 1700X drew 112, and the 1800X drew 125. Still nowhere near to Intel's, well, 180 to 220 kind of numbers, especially for their higher end chips these days, but still pretty reasonable. So if you're planning on upgrading your GPU, do you need to be planning on upgrading from your first gen Ryzen CPU? Well, the answer is if you're gaming at 1080p, you will see a massive performance uplift even going for a third gen Ryzen chip. And if you can snag a fifth gen, then the gap is going to be insane. If you're gaming at 1440p though, it's not as big a deal. You will still see some improvements, and especially if you pick a third gen Ryzen chip up on the used market, hunt around for deals on places like eBay, you can get a good bit more performance, but it's not gonna be the difference between making a game playable at you know higher ultra settings versus, well, not. If you do more productivity-based work, then you will see a pretty sizable uh, performance improvement depending on your task. If you're doing things like video editing, then generally speaking, it's not gonna be you know, a, a massive uplift and even just going for a higher end version of the chip you have. If you have say a 1600, getting a 1700X should be a decent a little bump for you or even a 2700 to 2700X as those should be pretty well available, including on the used market. But if you're doing more intensive things, then yeah, you can see a pretty big improvement. So there you have it. Hope that answers your, your questions on should you be upgrading or not. If you have any questions still remaining, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And I would love to hear your thoughts in those comments too. If you have a first gen chip, are you planning on upgrading or would you rather upgrade your GPU and maybe upgrade to 1440p as well and make it not much of a, a big deal? Or would you rather upgrade everything at once or just individual pieces? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. With that said, if you wanna check out, for example, third gen or fifth gen Ryzen chips, I'll leave links to those in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can does vary. Otherwise, there is a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. There's affiliate links for people like Overclockers UK if you're buying from them or a load of other things like VPN options, Hubble Bundle, Streamlabs OES, just a load of stuff you can check out. And there's also a Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards as well. And that's pretty much it. Catch you all in the next video.